I'd like to show you some tips for using the color picker here inside of Photoshop. So if I come down to the foreground color chip, click on that, it will bring up the color picker. So I can be working away inside of here and if I ever wish to sample a color from within the image, I simply move my mouse out over the image, I get the eyedropper tool, I can click to sample a color. You can see that color showing up here in this little new section inside the color picker. I can also click and hold the mouse and then when I move around, you can see all the colors being sampled. Again, when I find the color I like, simply release the mouse and that's the color just there. Very nice. Okay, so now that I've got a color that I like, let's say I wish to make a slight variation of that color, maybe just slightly tweak the saturation or the brightness. Now there are many color modes here inside of the color picker dialog box. There's RGB, LAB, CMYK, but the one that's used by default is HSB, which stands for hue, saturation, and brightness. And out of those three, it's actually the hue itself, which is defaulted to. So when I say defaulted to, this vertical bar represents the hue, while the saturation and the brightness just here are controlled by this area just out here. So if I move from left to right, I'm changing the saturation and up and down changes the brightness. So this is great, but the problem is if I wish to say change just the saturation, of course if I run my mouse through here, I can easily accidentally change the brightness as well. So it'd be nice if we could change just one value, but not change the other. So of course we could say click inside of here and use the up and down arrow keys, which is great. It's a great tip in and of itself, but there is a slightly better way, a more visual way to do it. So I'll just go and grab that color again. And again, my Scenario just here is that I like this color, but I wish to maybe make it slightly less saturated. So if I go and click on the S here for saturation, that now switches this vertical bar to be saturation and the hue and the brightness are now controlled by this area just here. So if I click and drag through this vertical section just here, you can see the saturation is changing, but the hue and the brightness remain unchanged. Very nice. Let's go and sample another color. Maybe I'll go and grab a green through here. And in this scenario, I'm really liking this green, but I'd like a slightly darker version of that. So same idea as before, guys. If I just switch to the B for brightness, I can now drag through this vertical bar just here. And all I'm doing is changing the brightness while the hue and the saturation remain unchanged. Very cool. Okay, one last uh, tip I'd like to show you. Uh, if you need to select a perfect white and a perfect black, let me just cancel out of here super quickly because you probably already know, you can press the D key on your keyboard, which stands for default, which will give you a perfect black and a perfect white just down here for your foreground and background colors. I'll just jump back into the color picker just here. However, if you're already inside the color picker and you suddenly decide you need a perfect black or a perfect white, I've seen people do this. If they're trying to grab that perfect white, they're clicking around up in here and they're keeping an eye on the RGB values. They're trying to get a perfect 255 and it's taking them forever. Of course, you could come in here and dial in the numbers, but again, a very time consuming process. Here's the quick tip. Just click and hold anywhere inside of here and then just simply move your mouse outside the box to the upper left. Guarantee gives you a perfect white. Same if you're trying to grab a black, just click anywhere. Just drag your mouse outside down to the bottom left and you'll get a perfect black every time. So that's it there guys. I hope those tips for using the color picker help you out. Catch you later.